Hello everyone, we got a 7 game Monday NBA slate. Chicago and Indy. Chicago side, Wendell Carter Jr. could be back. He's currently listed as questionable. If he is back, then he's most likely going to be very limited. So um, we're not going to be playing him, but it just affects all the other guys' minutes. Um, like Gafford, he probably is, he might not start. Um, Thaddeus Young, Patrick Williams, just these forward centers, uh, their minutes are definitely going to hurt. Now, everyone else, I think Zach Levine, 9200. When he's over 9K, it's a little bit uh, tough to pay for him. Kobe White, 6200. Matchup's not that great, but he does have upside when he is able to shoot well. And then if Wendell does uh, stay out, then I think you can still look to Patrick Williams, um, Thad Young, but their prices definitely are going to be court plays. Senaransky, 4600. He's been playing more minutes recently. Temple, also someone that actually has been starting over Valentine now. Both of them could be value plays, but you know they're not like that cheap in the 3Ks, and it is a seven-game slate, so I think we can do better. Now the Pacers side, the closing lineup for this team is just always inconsistent. Even Sabonis is not closing sometimes, and that's just it's tough. But you know he's just way too ta- talented of a player, and it's way too good of a matchup here. So even at 9100, kind of a more you know on the higher end of prices for Sabonis this year. He's still definitely well worth it. He's got monster upside. It's a great matchup. He, he just he's one of the league leaders in touches. Brogdon 7700, love him as well. The Bulls are not a good team defensively. They struggle basically everywhere. And Kobe White, Zach Levine, definitely not known for their defense. So Brogdon, he hasn't been shooting well, but he's getting peripherals and he's still being able to put up 30, 40 drafting points. So when it's shoot well, you're gonna be looking at a 50, 60 point DK night for Brogdon. And also he has shooting guard eligibility. Miles Turner, he's also intriguing, 6K. And that's the Bulls, just always a team that we can target against centers. Now, he's not a guy that gets a lot of rebounds, but if you get a game where Sabonis doesn't close or something weird happens, Turner definitely can get big minutes. Doug McDermott being questionable, that also helps everyone else that is going to play uh, because that just means they could more likely uh, close because McDermott does sometimes get those minutes. And if he is going to be out, then we could definitely see Jeremy Lamb back into the lineup. And... At 4,800, he definitely does have 30, 40 point upside, and it's a great matchup once again. Now, this Houston game, Washington, John Wall, it's a revenge spot for him. He said that, you know, he doesn't like how the Wizards treated him, how he was traded. So, but now that he's not on a limit, he was expected to play 35 minutes last game if it wasn't blown out. We could definitely see big minutes for uh, John Wall. And the Wizards, they've been so bad this season. Um, I mean, Wall, without all the depot, too. There's just so many factors that are pointing in the right way for John Wall, so he's going to be one of my top plays of the slate. Eric Gordon, he's fine. Again, just everyone on the Houston side, it's going to be good for them. Wizards are just that bad. Cousins, 6,200. Minutes are definitely a concern because he actually didn't even return for a second stint in the first half. Now, the Wizards, it's definitely an easy matchup. They started Mo Wagner at center. He can't handle Cousins. You know, Robin Lopez, Alex Len, whoever they got, they're just not going to be able to handle Cousins. So as long as Cousins doesn't get frustrated, ejected into foul trouble, he does have monster upside in this matchup. Now, Tate, House, Sterling Brown, and Waba, they're just kind of like value plays, but like, you know, you're not going to feel too good about them because they're one, all other than Waba, they're all above 4K. So it's not like extreme value. The matchup's certainly good, but you're not going to feel great about any of these guys hitting 30 plus. Like, you know, I think at 20, uh, that's fine. It's not going to kill you, but that's just not going to win you a tournament. Like It's not going to be a needed play. Now, the Wizards side, Westbrook back-to-back, so he could rest. If he's out, then Bradley Beal has to be a core player at 8900 Even if Westbrook were to play, Beal's still fine at this price. Um, H. Smith's already out, so Raul Neto, he was on a limit last time Westbrook missed, but he looks to be ready to go now, and now you don't have H. Smith. 4600 not that cheap. But he definitely can play maybe 30 plus minutes here. And I think he can actually be a better value play than the Rockets guys. Then you have the F4K. He's someone that picks up usage when Westbrook is out. So at 4K, he makes sense for a value play. And they got to talk about Mo Wagner, 3200. He picked up the start last time uh, on Sunday. He played pretty well. So I would expect him to get another start here. And in that case, at 3200, you're looking at probably a very good value play. Now, there's definitely a chance he can bust because the Wizards have other guys that they can go to. And he does foul, so Cousins someone that can draw fouls. 
there's definitely concerns, so I wouldn't like absolutely lock him in 100% of lineups, but he's very productive. He definitely has a lot of uh, upside at this price. Now the Atlanta game, Tony Snell, I know he's questionable and he's not like a guy that we ever want to play, but when he's out, like last game, we saw them basically run a small, smaller rotation of eight guys because Skylar Mays, he didn't play in the second half. They basically ran an eight man and that's going to help the minutes of everyone. Like Gallinari, Reddish, they both look pretty good. I prefer Gallo because it's only $600 more and he's just more of a scoring threat. He can create more for himself. Uh, and Train, Capella, Collins, they're all going to be fine. Um, this is a very good rebounding spot for the Hawks. Uh, Capella's minutes are very, are very concerning because he played really well last game, but he didn't even close. So, yeah, that's something that's going to be tough. Uh, but, you know, when he does close, he's going to be able to break the slate. Collins, he's fine as well. He basically played a lot of backup center. That's something that we're concerned with about a Kongu being in now, but... It seems like Collins is still going to be able to get a lot of backup center minutes. And then if you were to run into Capella foul trouble, Collins at 7K is going to be way too cheap. So there's a lot of interesting pieces for the Hawks side. Now the Knicks, Randall, he's fine at 8,700. Mitchell Robinson being out, it just means that Randall can play more backup center. Now New Orleans Noel, 4,400. He didn't, like, he didn't kill you. Wasn't like a much needed play, but he was a good value last time. And that's kind of like the average game that you can get from Noel. So at 4,400, it's still very cheap. I think he still has very good upside. And honestly, I feel like he's still going to be a core play here. He's just too cheap. Um, he really does have 40 points ceiling, uh, 40 points ceiling. Now, Elf, Rose, Burks, quickly, they all will be getting like 20 plus minutes, but they kind of don't run anyone like a lot, uh, a lot of minutes. Now, this is a very good matchup, for, especially for guards. So definitely going to be interested in these guys. It definitely feels like someone out of these four are going to put up 30 plus. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's going to be tough to try to figure out who it is. Um, Bullock, 3,700. Obviously not as good. Shot dependent minutes aren't as safe, but he's the cheapest. So, you know, if you really need to save, he could be an option. Now on the Philly side, Joel Embiid, he's 10.5. Him against Gobert, they've both pretty much gone off against each other in the past. So... I'm not too concerned, especially because there's no Jokic on this slate. If you're paying up, it's really a meet at center. So it's a different way to build your lineups. I actually do like that approach because basically everyone's going to go with like Cousins in the mid-range or they save with Noel Wagner. So if you just pay up for centers, you're going to be a lot different. Now, if he misses, then yeah, Simmons, Tobias, it's a tough matchup, but the usage just goes to them. Um, Dwight Howard then value. So something to monitor what happens here. Um, Utah now, other side, Mitchell's going to look really good again without Conley. In c close games and against, like, good teams, Mitchell usually does take up, uh, take more shots, gets more usage, so I do like Mitchell quite a bit. Um, he was hurt by blowout and foul trouble last game. Colbert, 7200. This is a matchup where if Embiid's in, we can definitely see him play more minutes. Now that favors Colbert, um, play, playing time. That was just against the Bucks, so they're going to get staggered again. Clarkson, Ingles, Boyan, they're all fine, but at these prices, like, they don't feel like core plays. So, really, it's going to be at the top with Mitchell and Gobert. Cavs, Drummond set off for rest. He should be good to go here. And against the Warriors, he could definitely play really well and get more minutes because he's – obviously, he's going to start. And the Warriors, they just don't have size right now. Like, Draymond's not going to be able to handle Drummond. So, if he starts really well – He's going to be able to play probably like at least 30 minutes. And at 7,600, he has all the upside in the world. So Drummond, I definitely want to have some of him in tournaments. Now, Sexton and Garland, they're fine as well because it is the Warriors. Like, they're not a good defensive team. And, um, you know, the, the Cavs, they do run a lot through their cards. So they're always going to be in play. Now, the Warriors, Seth Curry, he kind of failed last time. Um... But here, I mean, what are you scared of? I mean, this guy has 70, 80 point upside. And the Cavs, not a defense that's good. Um, Draymond, he should be back, or he should be in for this one, rather. So you're going to have someone who is able to get Curry the ball, get, some, get him some good looks. So I do like Curry under 10K now. Oubre, Wiggins, they're fine. I prefer Oubre usually. So, um, yeah, I think that's really it for the Warriors side. I was going to be looking at the starters. 
Now the Miami side, Drag is still out, so that's gonna help obviously none because he's gonna start probably. And you have Hero coming off the bench, so they're both in play. Um I'm just not a fan of none because he's got a really low floor and they can definitely go away when uh from him from a closing lineup. He got four steals last time, he's shooting really well, game blow blew out, so he got more minutes than expected. I'm gonna go with Butler uh as my preferred guy if you're playing a heat. Bam's good too, but Butler just being able to handle the ball more, score more, get more peripherals. Um, but Duncan Robinson, I guess, 4400, like, he's he just needs to get hot from three. So, you know, if you're looking for someone that you think could have a good shooting night, Duncan could definitely do that. Clippers side, we don't really know what's happening. Like, I would think Kawhi plays because he was a back to back. They wanted him to play tonight instead of against the Cavs. So, Kawhi probably going to be in, then yeah, I'm going to like him. Paul George, it said that he's not uh, with a timetable for a turn, so I'm going to expect Kawhi to play basically alone without George again, so definitely like Kawhi. Butler probably going to defend him, but I mean, Kawhi's just amazing, so 9600, I'm not going to be afraid of that. Lou Will, 6400, if Kawhi's back, then it's not that great of a matchup. I probably don't want to play Lou, um, and everyone else, they're just not going to be that great, like... Patrick Beverly, you know, he's back. He's slowly getting more minutes, so don't really want to play Reggie Jackson or Kennard or Terrence Mann. And then the last game, Brooklyn. There's no KD. You're getting back DeAndre Jordan, though, so we get to see maybe they go with Kyrie, Harden, Harris, Green, and DeAndre, or they can go with, like, Bruce Brown um, because they haven't started him, so we're going to have to wait on the lineup. But Harden's going to look the best here in 10.7K. Kyrie said that Harden's basically the point guard. So Harden's going to basically be the more productive player. Now he's significantly more expensive than Kyrie. So both of them are going to look really good. Um, first seven games, slate, I don't think you need to like exclude them. I think you play them together. But if you're doing that, you better be playing someone from the Kings because there's other guys that we can definitely be spending our money for. Um, DeAndre Jordan, 4,500. He could be a value, but... Like, it's because everyone's probably going to go to Nolan's Noel, 4400 So, by paying $100 more, you're getting John and Jordan, who I would say doesn't have as much steals and blocks potential, but the matchup certainly is probably better because the Kings have played at one of the fastest paces. Um, the Kings, again, like, against the center position, they struggle. So, DeAndre without KD, uh, you know, that means more minutes because KD does sometimes play small ball five. Jordan at 4500, he could be a useful pivot play, low owned. Um, so, King side now, Fox, I mean, he played on Sunday, so I expect him to play here again. Fast pace, Brooklyn haven't been good defensively. Um, so, Fox at 800 on a back to back. I'm not going to be too worried about that. He's just been playing really well this season, so I definitely do have interest in him. Now, Buddy, Barnes, Halliburton, they're all fine. Um, because of the defense being poor, I prefer Buddy. Uh, his minutes are also more safer, but the price is definitely none of these guys are going to be core plays. Holmes at 6K, he definitely has upside, 40 point upside, but again, just being a center is going to hurt like the opportunity cost. So, Bagley 4700. I mean, if he can play, maybe because he's cheap. He's got upside. Brooklyn struggle is the four, so that's a really good game. But overall, right now, what we have to work with, I think we have to look at Brogdon as one of the better plays. Um, and put him at shooting guard because we're going to be playing a lot of John Wall most likely and then there's going to be Bradley Beal who if he's playing without Westbrook then yeah I'm going to want Beal uh, a lot and then for value forward I'm going with Gallinari right now but obviously that's subject to change and the other side we're going to go with the value center option Noel now I think Wagner's fine Cousins also um, so there's just a lot of plays that I definitely do have interest in and if Westbrook were to be in, you can still go with Beal, but if uh, if he's in, maybe, you know, I would go with Harden instead. So, you know, either way, you know, it's, it's either Harden or Beal, but the other four are in my court plays right now. So that's going to be the core five as of now. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like before you go. You can find me on Twitter at Bawfuls, link will be in the description below. And good luck on this site, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.